Karen here. Today we are talking all about giant jigsaw puzzles. I'm so excited. I've been wanting to do this video for a really long time. I have so much to say about them. So while I was home over Christmas, I decided to pull out the 9,000 piece puzzle that I did 10 years ago, and I still had it in sections. So I decided to put the whole thing back together and then Spoiler alert, I decided to take the whole thing apart. But the reason for that is because I'm actually going to give it away to one of you. So make sure to keep watching until the end of the video for all the details about how you can win that exact puzzle. First though, I want to talk about giant puzzles and how you go about tackling them. So the biggest puzzle that I've ever done is 9,000 pieces. It is the Astrology Puzzle by Ravensburger. Quick disclaimer, I don't actually believe in astrology. Um, I think horoscopes can be fun, but I'm like, I don't actually think it's real. I just liked the picture that was on the puzzle. So Ravensburger obviously makes a bunch of 9,000 piece puzzles. They also have a handful of 18,000 piece puzzles. And then on their website right now, they have two puzzles that are 40,320 pieces. That is so many pieces. There's also a puzzle out there called Life, the Greatest Puzzle that I found out about 10 years ago. I've been wanting to do it ever since, but I've never had the time or the space to actually tackle it. It is 24,000 pieces. It's so beautiful. I've also seen this wildlife puzzle, which is 33,600 pieces. And then the biggest one that I've been able to find that is commercially available is currently Educa's Around the World puzzle. It is 42,000 pieces. They just barely beat out their Ravensburger ones. So these puzzles are not cheap. Uh, the 9,000 piece ones will be around $100. When you get up to the like 40,000 piece ones, those can be about $400. But I mean, it's a big product and a big undertaking. This isn't a little thousand piece puzzle that you can get done in an afternoon. When I did my 9,000 piece puzzle, I kept track of all of the times that, like the exact time that I started and stopped working on it each time that I sat down to do some. And so then when I added it all up, it was a little over 500 hours, which is the equivalent of three weeks straight of puzzling, but over a period of a couple months. But here's the thing with giant puzzles. This is the secret. You don't actually have to do the entire thing at once. Once you hit a certain piece threshold, once you get into the like high thousand number of pieces, the manufacturers will actually separate the pieces into different bags for different sections of the puzzle. So that 42,000 piece puzzle that I told you about before, that actually comes in seven bags of 6,000 pieces each. And I haven't done it, but I assume it would be split up evenly like this. The 9,000 piece puzzle that I did actually came in two bags of 4,500 pieces each. But that being said, here is my personal puzzle philosophy. I am not here to do two 4,500 piece puzzles. I signed up to do a 9,000 piece puzzle. So when I did my puzzle, I did mix the two bags together so that I was in fact doing a 9,000 piece puzzle. This is a choice that you'll have to make for yourself if you want to tackle one of these. And I mean, when you get up to like 30, 40,000 pieces, it might not be worth it to mix them all together just to be able to say you've done it. At that point, you're spending so many hours just sorting out pieces. But since it is separated into sections and you can look at the pieces in each bag to figure out like which section of the puzzle each one is, you could mix together like two of the bags and then do a 12,000 piece section. Or you could mix three of the bags and do two 
18,000 piece puzzles. Since they're separated, you do have options for how you want to go about tackling it, depending on how much time you want to put into it, how much frustration of just sorting through like thousands and thousands of pieces, and also how much space you have to be able to lay out like the entire puzzle at once, or if you have to do it by section because that's just how much space you have. But a lot of people don't know that with these giant puzzles, they are separated out. So yeah, you don't actually have to do the entire thing at once. That's a little puzzling secret for you. Another secret is that sometimes with puzzles that big, they won't necessarily have a unique cut across the entire puzzle. So in this 6,000 piece puzzle that I did in high school, you can see that I actually filled in the, the center line, both horizontally and vertically, because those pieces were shaped differently than the the pieces in the four quarters of the puzzle. For that one, I don't remember if it was separated into bags or not, and I also don't remember if the cut was repeated exactly between the four quadrants or if it was like a slightly different cut. I feel like it was just the exact same cut between the four uh, quadrants, but don't take my word on that. Um, if anyone has done this puzzle or similar puzzles, let me know because I'm not entirely sure but they definitely don't just do like one unique puzzle cut across the entire thing. They have it separated out and you have different pieces going halfway through. And so that actually made it a lot easier because even though the pieces were all mixed up and it was a single 6,000 piece puzzle, I had a lot filled in in the center that I could work off of. So there wasn't stuff just kind of floating around in the middle forever. All right, so now that I've given you a little introduction into the world of giant puzzles, Let's cut back to what I filmed over Christmas where I'm gonna show you the 9,000 piece puzzle in more detail and show you how I managed to keep it together without gluing it for 10 years. All right, everyone, I'm back at my parents' house for Christmas and while I'm here, I thought it was time to, for the first time in almost 10 years, put back together my 9,000 piece puzzle. I originally did this puzzle in uh, the summer of 2009, I believe, which is just about 10 years ago. And ever since then, uh, this is the biggest puzzle that I've ever done, so I could not bear to take it apart. So here's how I have kept it together for all those years without it taking up the entire floor. Basically, I have one of these Ziploc big bags and I um, separated out the puzzle into sections that were 20 by 30, which is the size of a standard piece of foam core. And stacked in this bag, I have just stacks and stacks of foam core with sections of the puzzle between them. So I cleared out a big space on the floor in this room. Uh, this puzzle measures about uh, like six and a bit feet by four and a bit feet. <laughs> so um, I had to clear quite a big amount of space, but I think I have enough. So I'm going to attempt to put this thing back together. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Last a piece, but it's okay, it's just one out of 9,000. <laughs> And I seem to be missing two pieces. 
So we'll see if those turn up somewhere. I hope they're around here somewhere. <laughs> missing they were just in that big ziploc bag all right guys here i am on my puzzle when i was working on it i would literally just sit in the middle of it just like this and then work on the edges because obviously it is bigger than my arm span like it would not have made sense to be sitting off to the side and putting the pieces all the way in the middle so there's a tip for you for big puzzles don't be afraid to just sit down in the middle of them. <laughs> All right, so back to me here. Here are a few more tips for doing giant puzzles. As you can see in these photos, when I was sorting that many pieces, I couldn't fit them all into like one puzzle box because it would have been just too many layers of pieces. So a favorite trick of mine is to grab the tops of other puzzle boxes or the tops of board game boxes and to use those to lay out all of the pieces. That way these boxes are portable. You can like pick them up and carry them to a different section of the puzzle. And I know that some of you out there do not like this method. I've gotten a lot of comments on my how to do a jigsaw puzzle video where I talk about this method. I've gotten a lot of comments of people who like to use baking tricks which is a great idea because that's really flat, you have a big surface area, so that totally works too. But for me personally, when I was doing those big puzzles, I was a high school or college student living with my parents. I didn't have access to a ton of extra baking trays. What I had were puzzle boxes and board game boxes. So that's what I used, but as always, like do what works for you. I also would work on foam core that I put on the ground, which meant that I didn't need to have a giant table to like commandeer for months at a time to work on these huge puzzles. I would tape the foam core together so that the edges wouldn't um, like get on different levels if I had to like sit in the middle of it and then break up the puzzle. So I just used uh, like painter's tape or masking tape, like whatever you have to just tape along those edges. This is an easy solution to make a temporary puzzle surface. Although I will say that it was a lot easier to sit on the floor leaning over a puzzle for hours on end when I was 16 rather than now when I'm 28 and then my back starts hurting within like an hour <laughs> and I feel like it's only going to get worse from here. Also, and I know that I've talked about this in a few different videos, but I cannot stress how important it is to separate pieces by shape. In the astrology puzzle, towards the end, there was just so much of just the night sky, just various shades of purple, like no texture anymore, just different colors. I would not have been able to finish that if I hadn't separated out all of those pieces by shape and then just worked really methodically to try them one by one, try to match up the colors as best I could, and eventually I got it done. All right, so now I'm gonna cut back to me at Christmas. I'm gonna tell you guys about all of the biggest puzzles that I've ever done. And I know that I talked about these in my jigsaw puzzle collection video, but I've actually dug up a few more photos and videos of some of those puzzles. So there's some new stuff in there. So cut back to me. <laughs> Ooh, oh no, the next one is literally on the bottom of this stack. Let's see if I can get it out. <laughs> Having a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle avalanche, but luckily none of the pieces are coming out of the boxes. Okay. I got all of those stacked back up. So the next biggest puzzle that I've done is this one, which is called Butterfly Rainbow. It's from the company Suns Out, which is not a puzzle company I've really heard of before. I don't think I have any of their other puzzles. This one I did take apart. You can see 
Oh wow, it's still, okay, it's still kind of in sections, but like, let's be real, it's, I wouldn't be able to really put this, put the whole thing back together like this. I remember I did this one in high school. This was um, before I did the 9,000 piece puzzle. This was easily the biggest puzzle I had done at that time. And I actually have this great photo of my friend Marissa from this um, photo assignment from my photo class of her like pretending to be me sitting on the puzzle when it's half done. I also have this 5,000 piece Ravensburger puzzle, which I think when I did the haul video, I could not find it at the time, but I found it. It was just in a box over there. And um, I did this one when I moved to San Francisco and I was not 21 yet. So I couldn't really go out and I had no friends and so I would just um, sit in my apartment and work on my 5,000 piece puzzle. This one is also Ravensburger. It's another like under the sea scene and I feel like um, when I took this apart I think I had my friend Alex come over and we got some footage of us like some cool footage from underneath a glass table of me taking this apart. So I'm gonna dig around and I'm gonna see if I can find that. And if I can find that, then you will see it right now. <laughs> It is almost time to take apart the 9,000 piece puzzle. But before I do that, I just want to talk about the puzzle box. This is a Ravensburger puzzle, which as I talked about in my last video, is a super high quality brand. The box has this beautiful shiny gold detailing and it's made of really high quality cardboard. And it really does need to be a high quality box because 9,000 puzzle pieces gets really heavy, so you need a sturdy box to be able to contain all of them. The inside of the box is the beautiful Ravensburger blue cardboard. It also comes with a giant poster of the image so that you can really look at what you're putting together in uh, really good detail. It has a booklet with tips for doing giant puzzles and a little information about the image that's on the puzzle. And the inside of the box has the these walls made of cardboard, which create the lip that the lid sits on. They're not glued into place, like you can take these out, but they're really sturdy, so I mean, you just leave them there and that kind of creates the structure of the box. And I just wanna emphasize again, when you're doing a puzzle this big, these puzzle boxes are big and they are heavy. Here is a picture of me holding an 18,000 piece puzzle. I mean, I could barely pick that up and it is like as big as I am. All right, so here are a few final shots of my 9,000 piece puzzle. And now it's finally time to take it apart. also kind of cathartic. I love taking puzzles apart. I think it's so fun. I know that a lot of you guys out there hate it and that you glue every puzzle that you do. And I considered gluing this one, but honestly, it's just so big that like that would have been a really big project. Um, I don't even know how I would have gotten it out of the house or like how we would have transported it anywhere because there was nowhere in my parents house to like hang that up on the wall and it wasn't really an image 
that I wanted to hang on the wall. It was just an image that I wanted to do a puzzle of. So when that's the case, like there's not really any sense in gluing it together. I'd rather take it apart, give it away to one of you guys, and then somebody else can enjoy doing this giant puzzle. nicely to the giveaway. So here is me from Christmas explaining a little bit about how I want the giveaway to work. So I'm also, now that it's back together, I'm kind of thinking maybe I should take the whole thing apart and give it away to one of you guys. Because I mean, it's not doing anyone any good sitting in my closet in sections. And I feel like one of you might really want to do a giant puzzle like this. So here's the thing though, I want to make sure that it goes to someone who will actually put it together. So I'm going to have all the details for how to enter to win this right down below. Um, but there are a few things that like I can't really judge this, but just in good faith, I would like you if you're entering to be have the time to actually put this thing together, to have the space to actually put this thing together. Um, I'll have the exact measurements listed down below so that you know exactly how much space you need. And be in a position where you ordinarily like wouldn't be able to afford a big puzzle like this because I would love for it to go to someone who just doesn't have the resources to get a giant puzzle, but has the time and the space to actually put it together. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to put all of the details right down below. The giveaway will be happening over on Instagram, just like all of my other giveaways. It's just a lot easier over there to be able to keep the entries organized and message the winner and be able to like DM back and forth. It's just so much easier there than on YouTube. And uh, I think that's all I've got. I hope that you've learned something about how to do a giant puzzle or if you do giant puzzles all the time hopefully not everything I said was totally wrong leave me a comment right down below telling me what is the biggest puzzle that you have ever done and how long did it take you to finish and also tell me what you then did with it did you glue it together did you take it apart I am just very curious what people actually do with these giant puzzles once they finish them. So if you want to learn more about Ravensburger puzzles, I did a review the other week talking about their 1000 piece puzzles. So I'm going to put that right down below. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe because I have so many more ideas for puzzle videos that I'm going to be making all year long. So stay tuned for those and I'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.